Welcome back to another Swans Cast podcast. And this week, I'm happily, I'm happily, I'm happy to say I'm joined by Neil from uh, Tykes TV, also part of Barnsley Sport as well. So thank you for joining me, Neil. Thanks a lot. For, uh, thanks for invite. Thanks for me joining. No, all the thanks is with me. Um, obviously, um, I mean, you're in League One. We're in the Championship at the moment in terms of the clubs we support. Mm. And I think anyone following either club will know why. Um, perhaps we're having a catch up today, and that's obviously because Michael Duff has been announced uh, just under a week ago or a week or so ago now to be joining Swansea from Barnsley after a long, drawn out sort of um, saga, if you like, mm-hmm. of Ma- Russell Martin joining Southampton. And apparently that's still not finished with the compensation. They're not 100% happy with how that's gone. Talks about going to tribunal, but we'll see what happens with that. There's a, mm-hmm. Yeah, pa- pa- apparently they're trying to say when. Um, when he was approached, Southampton was still a Premier League club. So in the contract of Martin, it was like a certain compensation for Premier League club. Mm-hmm. And obviously, the Southampton are like, no, no, we got rele- we were confirmed relegated, but the season wasn't technically finished when they started talking. So I guess that's the grey area. <laughs> but yeah, you know, when money's involved, they all want to try and get the most of what they can. Definitely. So that's what delayed it all. <laughs> um, but for us, at least we've got clarity now. And I guess for yourselves, because it wouldn't, probably have felt nice to be dragged into that sort of thing, um, even though it was perhaps only for a week or two at the end. But yeah, I want to get your reaction, really, and maybe give an insight of what we can expect from Michael Duff. I know it's never necessarily a nice conversation for the team that's losing their manager, especially when you did have a good season last year. And hopefully we can just be very grateful for success this season, I guess. So I'd like to see what we've got coming ahead of us. a little bit of a change of plan from what we were going to do this week. So we are going to announce a giveaway, but that will be on the next one. Obviously, when we recorded last week's podcast, Michael Duff actually got announced during recording. So kind of changed our plans on the fly. Um, but yeah, we'll get a little bit of a deep dive in today and we'll, we'll go from there into next season. So first of all, Neil, yeah, if you'd like to maybe, I know I did a bit of a long introduction there. Maybe you can let the fans know where they can find your content and maybe on twitter if you're vocal there yeah i mean uh twitter it's uh neil uh, at tax tv tax underscore tv and also at youtube uh which is tax tv uh, so there's a lot of tax tv uh theme going off but again yeah. w- once you search that uh in youtube and a, sh- a shout out uh for gab as well at boundary sport uh he supports me and he helps me uh, as I do content, he'll put it on his Twitter on Barnsley Sport. And it's everything Barnsley, um, you know, non-league and everything. It's not just Barnsley, but it's all non-league, Sunday league sides. So full shout out to him as well. So if you've got any Swansea fans that are up in that area, maybe something you want to take an interest in checking out. Um, but also any Swansea fans that want to know a bit more than Michael Duff that we're going to discuss today. I guess there's some content on your channel that can kind of... Um, Talk about how the season went for you under him, if people are interested in going back and, and seeing what happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into that right now. So first of all, we'll we'll talk, we'll, we'll kind of approach it. I've done a little bit of background research myself, but we'll kind of approach this as I'm going in blind. And mm-hmm. for the fans that might not know who Michael Duff is. Mm-hmm. So the first question I have is, who is Michael Duff? So coming from Barnes and Swansea, from your perspective, who is Michael Duff? Uh Michael Duff is he only in his playing career he had two clubs, um, Burnley and Cheltenham, and that's it. So a pretty loyal man, um, highly regarded in in lower leagues. It especially did a great job on a shoestring at Cheltenham um, after we had a disastrous season, got relegated from Championship to League One. We wanted a manager to come in, was uh, shake it up, set standards, reset mm-hmm. button, and. Just come in and fresh pair of eyes, and it, that's what he did. I mean, it took him a couple of months to more or less sort out his style of play with the players he's got. Um, he preferred, and this is the weird thing where I couldn't understand is that the, the, he prefers to play a 4 4 2. And when he was at Cheltenham, it didn't work out for him, so he went to three at back, two wing backs, but he still likes to play two up front, which were. For me, a bit weird to see because we normally have like one striker up front and playing off and kind of thing. So when he came in June uh, last season, so been here 12 months before he came to Swansea, came in, I was lucky enough to get invited to press conference and 
Wow. I mean, he, he walked in that room and he like owned it. He come from a military background, his parents. So he had that persona. Um, very well respected. I mean, not for all local media, what would be a kind of thing, you know, uh, our local news, TV stations and stuff. And he just answered it. We're no dodging any questions, you know. Oh, he asked, he, he, he answered. Um and again, it was refreshing to see because normally you, you see some managers and they'll give kind of a politician answer. And yeah. as a fan, you don't really want that. Um, no. If if you've played poor, you wanted to say, yeah, do you know what? We've, we've played poor, we deserve to get a bit. But not to say we're unlucky and find excuses. Um, so we had a pre-season. First, you know, a couple of games, you, you, you take it with a pinch of salt, thinking, wow, we, we can see what he's trying to do with you. I pressed tempo straight away. Fitness were completely different. It was unbelievable fitness. I'm like, wow, these players are going to know the... And I don't know if he's used this terminology when he's been at Swansea yet, but uh, sweat on shirts. That was his, one of his favourite sayings. He like he wants to see sweat on shirts. And after pre-season has started, we went to, I mean, long, long away trip for us to Plymouth, um, who eventually went up. And... We were kind. You of, could see kind of what he was trying to do, but again, exploited because we we're playing beside press tempo wing backs and players were still coming to terms with it. It's first home game against Cheltenham, ironic, and again, it was frustrating because we we're, were playing so well, and it was where's this goal going to come from? And that's one thing that he was trying to do, but the players that we had just didn't. I won't say fit. Yeah, we didn't really fit into it. We brought James Norwood in. So he kind of wants to mix the the youth up with a bit of experience, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd imagine that's one of the reasons Swans have gone for him. Yeah, I mean, I think it'd be a, a, a perfect fit for Swansea. Um, I really do with players that you've got. Play, you know, latter stage of a career, I'm not being disrespectful with that, but, you know, we, you look at some of your, your bright young stars what's coming in via... That'll be one of them kind of mixes where I think, yeah, do you know what? You might add, add another one or two players in. You probably, it's probably balanced it, got it. Uh, yeah. But one thing as a, as a balance fan, what I will say is that the standards will change. Everything's professional. It don't matter who, if you're cleaner at club to board at, a member at board at club, you'll talk to everybody the same with respect. Um, you'll never discriminate or like talk down to anybody, belittle anybody. He's very humble in that. That was one of the things he made quite clear when he came into the club. You know, footballers are a privileged, you know, wage and they are lucky to be where they are. And that's what he, he wants that togetherness. It's not a an individual star played. It's like how you play as a team and how you play for one another as a unit. Um, and again, that was refreshing to see as a fan because I'm thinking, yeah, do you know what? He's really, he's really not buying into it, but he's really getting into this what it should be, what it's all about, the fans, uh, the fan base, the core, the culture. And if teams doing well on pitch, then fans around it are going to buy into it even more and, you know, attend and get behind the team even more. And it proved that for the season as we went on. It sounds very positive then. Um, kind of, in some ways, similar to Russell Martin, um, but also I think a little bit more rigid with some of the stuff he's saying, but in the, not in a bad way, the, mm. saying the military background and stuff could potentially be something that we need, I guess, going forward. And it's interesting to say that he has a mix of youth and experience. I wasn't quite aware of that part of um, what he could offer, but that's a vital tool for any manager at Swansea at the moment because of our financial situation. I'm sure mm. maybe you're in the same boat where try and bring players through your academy. Yeah. Maybe one or two of them get set, set, sold on, which is what continues to fund the club then. It's always interesting to see who the next person coming up through the academy is and maybe a new manager like that can find that person that no, no one's really expected to make an impact. So that would be quite interesting to see. So before we get into some of his um, tactics, maybe the formation, I know you touched on a bit of it and some of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. I've got a few questions myself in regards yeah. to his managerial style. Um, I just want to get a few thoughts on how you feel about him leaving Barnsley and, you know, we not that bothered or happy uh, probably not happy but um or disappointed like pick at it if you like uh, i would devastated if i'm being honest um uh, i said 
after we got relegated and we were looking for a coach manager, which I was manager, but um, I said that the next appointment is going to be cru- crucial before it plays. And it turned out that way because I think he got three manager at month awards throughout the season. <coughs> um, and again, is I just liked him as a uh, as a manager. I liked him how he set his stall out. He had time for fans. Everything about him, he, he, he just he bought it. I'm going to say it, he bought into the town culture because obviously it was being a mining uh, uh, town. He had all the players, and the first team, the first team players, not the under twenty three, but he had all the players go down to Yorkshire Coal Mining Museum and he had them down there, and he made them aware that. You know, people are out there uh, are working hard to come and watch you play, and you're very privileged in training and having a, a football game on a Saturday or a Tuesday night, and you go back training. He said these people are going working shifts, they're working days, nights. He says and they're coming to pay their hard earned money. And he said, he said they're allowed to voice their opinions, but the loss will get behind you if you see that again, sweat on shirts. After that, with military background, they did him up on Yorkshire Moors uh, with, with military, with army, going through, camping it and roughing it. Uh, and again, it wasn't just under 23s, it was, it was the first team squad. I mean, you don't hear about now, you know, it's first teamers up on Lake Districts and Yorkshire Moors. Like, but that's the bonding that he wanted to get and install into the players. And then when you go back and you're playing football, these fans here will support you, but we need to see the effort you put in. Yeah. And it kind of, and he kind of paid off. And again, with Duff, our, our people, rumors are already going about saying, if you don't go up, he'll probably get cherry picked off by, you know, a championship club. Or if it had gone up, would it have been a struggle in a, a, a bigger championship club? Like, you know, Swansea uh, stadium and facilities and that would his eyes get turned. But when, after we, we had the defeat in, at Wembley, he said we're going to like look his wounds and readdress it. But, you know, the, that old saying, football is a funny old thing, money can talk and come in and, you know, he's, he's moved to better his career. Um, and you can't knock him for that. It'd just been nice to have him another season to see if he could have got us up uh, at second go. But, yeah, un- unfortunately, it didn't happen. It's just one of them things, I guess. Um, <clears throat> it's the same with, with, with the poacher i guess in this instance but it's the same thing with us losing martin and mm. we've added with cooper potter it's always the bigger club style isn't it to take yeah I, I not to disrespect you guys but in terms of league like the, the, the people in the league higher or the people that might have just got relegated or who's mm. got the better chance of making me progress my career right now mm. yeah in, in a couple of years time it might be the other way around and and then that happens doesn't it and it can be equally frustrating but for players as well um but yeah so He's obviously come from Barnsley. I see he had quite a good um, win record there, fifty-five point two percent in the year that, yeah. that he played. He, he was your manager in fifty-eight games, was so thirty-two wins. Um, he also came from Cheltenham, where I think he spent four years, but that was during the COVID period, so it was difficult to kind of judge the full duration. But two hundred and three matches, forty percent uh, win percentage there as well. Mm. Uh, and I know he got them promoted by winning League Two. And I think they had their highest ever league finish under him as well in, yeah. in League One. So obviously he had a positive CV to date. Um, I think I read somewhere that before he did sign for the Swans, Barnsley made a last gasp contract offer to try and keep him. Is that is that true? Yeah. Um, in a statement that went out Thursday evening because I'd just done on live uh, with a guest, Ryan, and we were talking about it because the momentum were gathering all for a week. It were looking inevitable. So I thought, yeah, but you know what, we'll do a live. And I, I literally just came off the live, just closing everything down. 20 seconds later, Twitter message pops so, up. Oh, it's just saying, oh, you're joking. So it was but read a statement from uh, Nirav and uh, Julian, the directors, and apparently that's what had happened. They'd, they'd, after the, I keep going back to when the final, that's when a lot of things started to gather momentum, is that they'd gone out and said that, Interest was shown in Michael Duff after the Wembley final, which obviously a via kind of thing. And it were made aware in it. The board were also aware and they offered, you know, better terms to uh, have Michael commit to Barnsley. Um, 
obviously for what he'd done, you know, there's a progress here, but you know, it's all looking positive. He's gone away, thought about it, and then obviously someone else has made an approach, probably more yeah. formal approach. And like you said, there, draw a Swansea, different league, an higher league, more, you know. I think it happens to any club, doesn't it? It's like what you just said there with Graham Potter, another another side will come in for that. So you kind of expect it, but it'd be nice to have some kind of like bit of stability. But once that had happened, it was, wow. My concern then switched straight away to, well, if they're coming for Duff, are they going to take Patterson? And yeah. it turned out, you know, uh, uh, later on this week that it did. I think it's quite common these days with managers when they move their, their coaching team, they're quite close and they, and they go with them. Like quite a couple of hours follows Martin. Mm. We had the same, same when Steve Cooper left. It just seems to be a theme that kind of happens quite often, especially with the younger managers. They yeah. seem to have the same people supporting them through their early career, definitely. Mm. And and that's quite a common thing. So um, going going forward then into perhaps how, how he's going to get on, on a Swansea, I think he's just come in, Martin's gone. Um, the first question kind of to ask maybe is like, initially, not for the full season, but initially, what can Swansea fans expect to see from him? What sort of changes? I know you touched on it a little bit already, but what sort of changes immediately might look to make to the squad, to the, the way the, the club plays, and maybe even the style of football that, that maybe we might show? The I think the formation will go for. Um, I mean, I don't know what style you've been normally playing under Martin, but what uh, Michael will do, he'll go three at back. He likes to have a sweeper keeper. He'll have two wing backs. He'll have a deep lying kind of, I want to say defensive midfield, but like a deep line playmaker. He'll have someone in midfield as a, a box to box and all over to get tackles in. He'll then have like an attacking midfielder, and he'll play two up front. Uh, so it looks very attacking, but it's also very structured and we all know the roles and all covers in what areas. You will find the tempo be unbelievable. It'll go set off straight away. First 10, 15 minutes, it'll be like a rocket. Um, that, war, that took some getting used to it, Barnsley. It took them... Probably until late September, early October. We had a couple of months where it was. We had a good win, then we lost 3-0 at home against Wickham. Then we had a good win, then we had a draw, then it was uh, a 1-0 defeat against Morecambe. It's like, wow, this is a bit jackal and eyed. Yeah. Then when we're coming into the last stage of October, going to November, it's like, do you know what? We can see what the players are understanding the roles better. Um, the, the fitness was up to speed. The, the five substitute rule definitely helped when you play that high I think it's been announced for the championship this season as well. Mm. That, really helped. Yeah. that really helped. That um, really helped. And again, when you're playing that high press, that high tempo, when you come to like last play 70 minutes, you know, 15, 20 minutes to go, fetch you on a fresh pair of legs straight onto that, especially if it's an attacking option. Um, it, it, it worked wonders. So what Michael will bring. It'll, it'll go back formation. It'll be high press, high tempo. Attack, he'll get a lot of crosses in box. Um, and But he always, always likes to play to up front, whether it be a man holding up and someone to knock off and run off it. One run into channels to free space up. We had Devante Cole and James Norwood in and out. We had Tedich. So it kind of rotates. So the, yeah. keep him on the toes kind of thing. But that's what you'll get with uh, Michael. Um, yeah, just to clarify the substitute thing. Obviously, we had five subs last season. It's five subs from nine named this season, yeah. apparently. So yeah. that's a new the update. Um, but yeah, it's, it sounds actually quite similar to a lot of things Martin did. He played five at the back quite often. Uh, mm. He did that period so they went to four. Although he didn't really use an attack in midfielder as such, but you're saying that the, that is part of what he would go for. Yeah. It's an attack in midfielder. So that's perhaps a change that we can have a look at. And the intensity, I think, is the, the thing that stands out to me. Mm -hmm. maybe the biggest difference um we've been focused on passing keeping the ball and keeping possession as a primary thing in the last two seasons you talk about the transition period maybe last into september october uh we kind of have been up and down going through it for martin's entire duration which is one of the massive frustrations fans have had mm -hmm. so a quicker transition 
would be far easier to cope with. So if it is only September, I'm sure a lot of people would be happy with that as well. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if the players, maybe they don't need to adapt as much as what they would have from a previous manager before Russell Martin, Steve Cooper, who was quite kind of defensive, um, rigid, if you like. Mm, uh, yeah. He could play passive football, but it was more don't get beaten yeah. first and then the other stuff. Whereas Martin was keep the ball first and then the other stuff. Mm. And that was a big change. So maybe um, it suits more this style now. They'll be able to transition into it easier. I'm mm-hmm. just wondering, because I was reading a little bit that stuff can be more pragmatic. So I was going in thinking he'd be a cross between Steve Cooper and Russell Martin, somebody who's going to set up to not concede a lot of goals, but also then go and play attack in football. Mm. Yeah, I mean, didn't really see, to be fair, we, we always... I think he made that mistake earlier on, and uh, when he tried changing it, he, he was like looking for a formation. Um, like I said, when he were at Cheltenham, he preferred the four four two. But I think whilst he were at Cheltenham playing that, he I think he lost ten games on go on Bob at Cheltenham. So he then changed it to three at back and still wanted to up front for attacking, and it, it worked for him. Yeah, I think at Cheltenham he had Alfie May. Uh, I think it was recently got a move to Gillingham. Um, but again, not an household name, but you know, 20 goals a season, yeah, um, for, for Cheltenham. So, again, it, it kind of identifies weaknesses, uh, but it also identifies strengths as well. So, like I said, at Cheltenham, when he were losing 10 at Bob playing 4 4 2, he changed it, he got a result, and then he stuck with it. Uh, but when he comes to Barnsley, he tried his free at back and it won't work. In, then he went to 4 4 2, then he played a 4 3 3, and it. It were kind of oh, stick to a formation. If it's not working, don't go this, don't go. And yeah. then when he stayed to his formation, that he thought, yeah, do you know what players are seeing, seeing the results. It kind of just went with it. And if it, I'd never really seen him ever play defensive. Never seen him play defensive. He's always tried to go and win a game, which I think that's what he wants as a as a manager. But then he'll not go silly gun or. Um, yeah, against, I think it was Sheffield Wednesday. He takes off a, a striker, but puts the next uh, d- uh, midfielder on just to show it up. You're not going to, you know, against your South Yorkshire rivals, you're not going to go full gun or when you're already winning. Yeah. So it kind of, you know, yeah, I'll do that when it's needed, but it's not, uh, no, well, this game's winnable. We can do this, or we've been unlucky, but we've, we've got it as all. It'll not go down. We are trying. That's, that's the thing yeah. that I liked about him. So it's quite positive then, quite exciting really to to see what he can do. So thanks for that insight. This um be interesting to see how he can use our squad. He likes arguing yeah. with officials as well and jumping up and down at touchline. He never ever sits down in, in, in dugout as well. You will find that a lot. Yeah, you will find that a lot. Very, very vocal. I've seen that it looks like he's proper running the players through their paces in this preseason. You only been here a week and a couple of the stuff they've released on the social medias, they look in tired <laughs> like, right which is what you want to see i guess in the yeah. first week isn't it like yeah. putting them through their paces but one of the key things martin struggled to get on top of i think during his duration here was a 90 minute fitness out of the players mm-hmm. whereas we'd be very good for a long time um and then 70 minute mark the other team would come back into it and we'd lose a lot of games late or draw or right. whatever um so hopefully he gets on top of that and we'll see a team that can put this intensity in that he's asking for 90 minutes. So yeah. I think the players might be on a bit of a shock when they're, they're going through this in pre-season at the moment. So that, that that's, uh, again, that would be interesting to see. Um, so we've looked at the formation potentially in the style. Um, I was going to ask, will we see pass in football? Because people often refer to the way Swansea play as the Swansea way ever since the Roberto Martinez, Brendan Rodgers, Michael Laudrup kind of days, where we had very good success and we were always labelled as a possession-based passing team, good passing football, Hmm. which is why Martin was kind of brought in, I guess. Um, But is that where we see a lot of passing or is it more kind of direct with purpose Um, rather than passing for the sake of passing? It bounds well. It were a bit of a mixture, to be fair. I mean, we had Luke O'Connell, a defensive like player, uh, playmaker midfielder and they linked up well with Herbie Kane so again the, the, the complement to one another but they'd like to play the, the one two give and go but then if we're an, uh, an option or a long ball on they'd also switch it as and when 
Yeah. Uh, one thing you were good at is identifying the weaknesses. So, no disrespect, but if you're playing someone like uh, Lincoln City, a Morecambe, a Fleetwood, very hard to break down. Uh, the light were dogged and it was kind of hard to get past them because as we were playing our game, which is like what I said, we play our game, the opposition were coming out to try and stop you. So we're like a full, you know, everybody were in their half kind of thing, they weren't venturing out. So he, he kind of had to adapt to play a, a quicker, shorter game, try and create a space because crossing ball into the box weren't working. You just but he was just catching practice for goalkeeper. So it was one of them where it's a frustrating kind of game sometimes. But yeah, again, you're not going to win every game comfortably when you're in League One. Sometimes you're going to have to grind out a 1 0. Um, and if it means playing right, I mean, we've done it before. Uh, I think it was away at Fleetwood. And it was literally last kick at game. James Norwood, he just hit a ball up front for Aitchison to run on to and he scored and then whistle went. And it, it was one of them kind of games where you never give up. You keep going to the final whistle. And that was yeah. installed into every every pristine player. Well, that's, again, good to hear because we fell foul of the opposite of that quite a few times under mm. Russell Martin as well. So it'd be nice to kind of have it the other side a little bit because there was so many heartbreaks then. Missing out yeah. on the playoffs, the amount of points we did could have been different, but obviously mm. wasn't to be. Um Here's the, maybe a question that's not so easy to talk about, but it's something that always you worry about when you lose a manager. We're going through it right now with Russell Martin, and that is looking at the players that you worked with before, essentially. So I'm just curious, is there anyone you see from your current squad that worked well with him last year, some maybe favourites of his that you might think would be looking to follow um, on his way up, up to Swansea? Um, I'm hoping they don't go. Um but I think one, well, I can think uh, probably three players that I think would do well for you. Um, one would be Mads Anderson, a central defender. Uh, I know he's been linked with Lulton Town. Another player, my favourite player, uh, I've got a lot of time for him uh, because he had a rough ordeal at Bolton, went to Celtic, uh, went out on loan and then he came to Barnsley. Uh, I've interviewed him, i talked to him personal. Luke Connell, a very, very down-to-earth kid. Um, fantastic left foot on him. Very, very motivated, very driven. Um, I wanted to be at balance for the rest of his career, but it's, it's never going to happen. Yeah. But I think he'd be a player that Duff would like because he'd identify that kind of area. And another player who I think could possibly be our captain this season, if Anderson goes, it'd be Liam Kitchen. Left-sided central defender, but also can play left-wing back role. Um, again, Fiery, gets stuck into a tackle. I think that's what uh, Michael Duff likes. But again, he's a player that I've seen improve under Michael Duff. And that's one thing he will do. It's, 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 when we went down, there were certain players there what weren't playing to the full potential. But Duff came in, and that's another thing. He, one of his strengths as well is that he'll also improve players. Um, not necessarily just bring players into the club and here you go, we've got a X, Y, Z player. Yeah. A player who might not have been playing to his full potential last season. This season, he's got time for him. He'll have a word of comfort for him. He'll explain. He'll talk to him. And I'm out shoulder. And I think Liam Kitchen and Devante Cole, who got 16 goals for us this, uh, this season, well, the season just gone, sorry. Um, two players who improved him to Duff. So again, not just the, the training, but they're also a man manager side of it. I think Duff and players at Swansea, what you've got. I mean, I don't know what players, you know, who you might think mm, they had a bit of a poor season, but I know they could be player better. I think Duff will pick up on that and Patterson yeah. now, and they'll identify that and try and bring them back to the player and potential that they could be. Yeah, um, one potentially is Morgan Whitaker. He's been heavily linked with the move away, so whether he stays is another thing. Mm. Uh, but someone that hasn't really hit it off at Swansea, but went to Plymouth and had. A very good time there so we record him in january and he just still couldn't make an impact so mm. whether that that's you know the, the, there's something there that can be worked with a change of heart whether i think he does want to leave uh, but if he can see a future of being integrated and playing regular at the level he was at plymouth mm. it could be something that's um looked into potentially but we'll have to wait and see on that one i was looking at um and only because 
I'm ex- I was expecting Russell Martin to try and take Mac Rhymes with him to Southampton, which was our key center of the park sign that kind of like everything goes through him. Mm. Saying he operates with a CDM in his uh, formation, that would be the role that suits Grimes down to a T, built mm. around that sort of thing. Yeah, I was wondering, Callum Styles, um, is he one of your? Was he one of his better players or not? Uh, not so you, you can have him. Uh, yeah. It's not well liked at uh, no. Barnsley. It's a bit of a marmite. Um, when we went down, he was one of the players that, that wanted to leave. He didn't really want to stay for cause. But he had a year left in his contract and he went to Millwall. I think he struggled at Millwall for a bit. Then he found a bit of a form. Um, Styles is one of them what has got a lot of potential. But I think he upset a lot, quite a lot of Barnsley fans when he was more or less coming out and saying... Oh, Chain is not up to base, chain not that. I'm, I'm like, mm, really? Do you want that in your, yeah. your changing room kind of thing? I know he's been linked with um, Watford because uh, Valley Schmel, who was to cover at Watford, obviously what Barnes coach through COVID times. So he'll know Callum Styles. Callum Styles, they say it is a, is a midfielder, but for me, when he's played at Barnes in that midfield role, didn't really do it. If I'm wanting, was position for me a more a left wing back left side of player attacking winger when they moved him into midfield which is what he said it was preferred position found wanting didn't track back a lot pretty lazy and again it was is the player telling the club this is how i want to play rather than the club saying well you are yeah. this player and I, it was just like one of them kind of players that uh, can cause an issue it sounds like yeah yeah, yeah. Like probably um, often now. <laughs> and I think <laughs> if he, yeah, I think if he went to Swansea, I think if he went to Swansea, he'd probably do a job here on left hand side. But then he'd probably think, oh no, but I, I prefer to be. And do you really want that? Your yeah. club? I don't know. Well, I was only looking at it. I was, I obviously don't know the detail. Mm. Um, thinking Mac Rhymes leaving, there'd be a hole there. But if he's not that strong there. Then it's not really. Mm. Like Grimes, I would say, is one of the best centre mids in the championship at the moment. So you'd be looking for a high level to replace that. Mm. Um, hopefully Grimes doesn't leave. We would need actually left cover because we haven't got a left back. And I've seen this squad right now. Mm. Uh, Ryan Manning just going on a free. So again, another big boots to fill. So A maybe player that then. could do well for you then. If you yeah. if after that left wing back role, I think a player that would do well for you is uh, Zaid Laresh. We, we had on loan from uh, Fulham and he's out of contract and Michael Duff were very 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 impressed on his work rate and his effort and he oh. even went on record to say that it were unlucky that he didn't have more first team appearances and caps for Barnsley because of uh, Nicky Cadden and Liam Kitchen filling them roles in but I know he was very very impressed and he spoke but highly highly regarded him so a player who was out of contract been released by Fulham that could possibly be a, a, a gap for you. Well, free transfers are always a winner, and we definitely need, even if he's like he ends up being second choice left back, we haven't got any. So hmm. um, hmm. that would that would be a winner, I guess. Hmm. Uh, okay, cool. I was going to ask as well then, while he was only there for a year, so I guess two transfer windows, but what sort of signings did he look to make while he was at Barnsley? Um, how did he use the transfer market, and was there any key successes that, that he brought in? Yeah, um, I think first off, like I've touched on it earlier, well, Luke O'Connell, um, yeah. I thought he was an absolute diamond. Uh, I love him as a player. A James Norwood also came in, a player that we never saw coming. Uh, we've always been used to the youth model role, but when Norwood came in in his 30s, it was like, where does this one come from? Turned out that Duff was specific. I want this player in because I know not only is he going to do it on pitch, but he can learn the players that we've got at the club for that position. Yeah. Uh, then you, you know, you look at like uh, Laresh, uh, you know, left wing back role. Then you go McCarthy, who came from St. Mirren on a free, but he picked up a nasty injury, been out most of the season from, I think, September, October time. Uh, started to come into it and then went out with a long injury. He's back in training now, but another central defender. Going into January, Addy Eistead, who's joined Charlton, he was another. Another uh, good signing. So again, there's, there's players here. We had Tedic, Slobodan Tedic, on loan from Manchester City. A player that was frustrating. First part of the season, 
I'm a lazy player, if, if I can say that. I think, you know, I'm a Man City, I'm a Premier League player. I, I'm a Premier League player, so I can do what I want. Yeah, but yeah. you're in League One. He picked up an injury, went back to Man City, and us as Bound fans thought, that way he's never coming back. But he came back in uh, February time, come back in with a different player. And it turned out, again, Michael Duff had a word with him. If this time of play, this is what I expect you to do. When you cross that white line, and I'm like, it's like a different, I think Man City sense is a different player here. Because Michael Duff literally got into his ear and told him, look, yeah. you've come back for a second bite now. We can make you or break you. you come, and I'm like, wow, where does this come from? Uh, he, you know, so again, it's it's very specific on the players he brings in to fit his style of play. He's not just going to get a player just for the sake of it, if you know what I mean. He, he's wanting yeah. a player to say, right, you're going to do a job up front. And if he's going to be playing two strikers up front, you're probably looking at, maybe four strikes in total, because he's going to chop and change and alternate it. We've got, I think, Perot and Callan at the moment, and whether you class Morgan Whitaker as a striker or not. So mm. oh, we've got Carl Joseph as well, I guess. He's come come back on loan. Obviously, he was actually with him at Cheltenham. So maybe you'll, you'll start getting some appearances here at Swansea as well. But yeah, OK, so that's in, interesting. Looks like free, free market and loan market making use of that sort of yeah. area then. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, OK. It's good. Um, okay, well, yeah, thanks for all the stuff you've kind of shared with us today. I got kind of maybe one thing to ask then, um, an overall view then. How do you think Duff will get on at Swansea? I know you've given us bits, mm-hmm. but generalising then, do you think he lasts the season? Do you think, yeah. I don't know if it will happen this year or in the future, there's something that he can do pushing on upwards can, and push us to maybe the playoffs? I think, did, did you finish, you finished 10th last season. Yeah, we missed out, uh, I think, Four yeah. or five, it was something two wins basically from playoffs. It was yeah, well, a lot closer than it should have been if you had taken the last 10 games away. Mm. We were something stupid like um, near more, more near relegations. We had nine win or no, seven wins in the last nine games, and the other two were draws, and that propelled mm. us up the table. So, got Russell Martin has moved because he had a really bad run before that of something like four wins in 21 games. Right, so, right. I mean, so uh, yeah, yeah, and then and then a nice like 10, 10 game streak and uh it's surprising what it can do. It's all forgotten. Yeah, uh, and I think that's what Swans fans are gonna have to do. They're gonna be they're gonna have to be patient and you will see rewards as fans, you could see what you were trying to do on, on the pitch. And I think as Swansea fans don't get too disappointed if it's gonna take a month or two to get the methodology of, of it to players. Like I said, like uh, like you said uh, yeah. earlier on, Luke, is that you kind of play five at back three and two in back. So that shouldn't be really such an issue. I think the biggest change that you will find or the players should find is the, the fitness levels will be really, really up there. Um, and again, I won't get too disappointed if, say, you know, you go into September and it's like, oh, yeah, we're a bit up and down here. We're not... It will come. Uh, you just need to give him time. Um, and if he gets the players in that he wants, and if, if he's back by board, you know, if he gets players in the way he identifies, um, I think you could be knocking on to playoffs if if you if the yeah. fans are if the fans are patient and if it doesn't happen, I mean, we kind of achieved this season last season, just gone sorry, this season, but last season just gone. And while well, we are victim of his own success, we're going to the playoffs, it kind of put him in shot window, this is how good he is. And I looked at it, if we'd have probably finished 10th, would it other clubs have been looking for him? Maybe not. But I think yeah. because he did a job such as he did in, first, in, in his fight first season, and he were like a couple of months into it, then he started coming. I think, mm, got a few admirers here. This is what he can do. If he can back him a bit more, we're a bit better class off player. We can we go? And I think that's, the, that's going to be the key element in that. I would say it's going to take him... I'd said two transfer windows. I think this summer is more about him knowing the players and what they're capable of doing. And then if you're in touch and distance, which I should imagine it will become new year, that's when he'll think, right, I need this player, that player, that position or this position. And he'll go and do it. And then you kick on. But yeah. I think two transfer windows he'll, he'll take with it. Plus, if it's, and he'll also identify players as well. You know, he identified them at Barnsley straight away. Uh, and I'm not naming them because it'd be unfair to do so, but players that weren't up to speed, what have been in this team action season before, it's a day you're going out on loan, you're going out on loan, you're going out on loan. And it's 
I want you to get first team experience, prove me what you can do. And I thought, do you know what? I'll take that all day long. I'd rather a manager come in and see it, right? You're not going to cut it here, but you're going to go out on loan, but you'll do it there. You've got a first team spot here. Yeah. And I think that's what players do need sometimes. A bit of a kick up backside, a bit of a ooh, reality check. I didn't know, I didn't think I'd have been going out on loan. I thought it was too good. And again, it keeps me on the toes. And I think that's what you need as a club. And and the fans will see it. The fans will see Duff Gate the all. It comes on at win, lose, or draw. It'll come on at every full time. Come on and applaud fans all the way around. You know, all all own fans will do that. And I I, I always stay there, never boot players. Even if they play bad, they don't mean to play bad, they just yeah, had a I'm bad day office. I just if they've had really, really bad, do I clap them? I might odd, clap odd one or two, but in general, I don't boo. I mean, everybody's different, but I always stay until the final whistle, win, lose or draw, because everybody can support a team when they're winning, but when they're losing, or it's not going their way. They need That's when they need kind support, of thing. isn't it? Yeah. And, and, Duff, and Duff will always say it in his press conference, he'll always say it in his notes and stuff, fans are, fans are what will be 12th man, they can help. And it does work, you know, and he does appreciate it. And that's one thing he does relate to and keep in touch with. And that's probably from his military background as well. And being yeah. at a club like Cheltenham is that he understands what it means to the people, the fans, that will pay the money to come through and watch a game of football, which yeah. in this day and age, it's, it's refreshing to hear. Well, he'll have his first big challenge when we take on Cardiff in September, which is not actually that far away. So, mm, mm, um, I'm going to keep an eye on that one. know what yeah. that means to the people before we get ahead. And yeah. to be fair, he's got big shoes to fill in that fixture, as much as um, you could say Martin's tenure here was not as successful as the previous two managers, not getting mm. to the playoffs in either year. Mm. Um, however, implementing perhaps an exciting style that's got him his move to Southampton. He won four out of four against Cardiff, and that's like unheard of. So, wow. first yeah. time the club had ever done a double. No pressure, then. <laughs> either club now in the South Wales derby had never done the double on each other wow. until Martin, and he did it in both his seasons. So, broke history, and then repeated mm. it the year after. That's a, that's the big shoes to fill in the, Not many. In the derby matches. No pressure. No pressure. No, no. no. <laughs> but um, yeah. But yeah, thank you very much for, for joining. Obviously, if there's anything we can ever do to support or share back in the future, if there's any connections that come up, whether you get you guys hopefully get promoted and uh, no problem, maybe we'll have some catch-ups then next season or cup matches or transfers or whatever, just give me a shout and always be happy to help. But really appreciate you joining me today. I've looked forward to it and um, I've, I've really enjoyed it. And like I say, uh, anytime, I'm, I'm more than happy to come on and uh, gain the insights. I think yeah. all being well, we might be buying players off for you rather than you buying players off for us, but who knows? Maybe it might would be nice and send so. you some, some of our knocking on the door players on loan. Yeah. It'd be nice. It'd That'd be, be nice. nice. We'll take that. Scare us up for I don't know who mine, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see who he identifies as um, being nearly ready because I'd be mm. interested to see actually when he looks at a youth team to see if there is anyone that gets picked out that perhaps wasn't necessarily there or thereabouts before hmm. that's always Might exciting when you get someone new coming through isn't it so yeah there's always there's always someone new with a new manager true true yeah fresh pair of eyes and that and if they come in and have a look yeah. it's like do you know what if he could do a job for me and it might be just that bit of a push up and he's oh, i wouldn't see this one coming but a player will buy into it and like it's a bit under duff he'll it will get the it will get the players in in their own self-belief and the mental state frame of mind and before you know where your eyes like a first team it's like wow Oh, yeah. yeah, so quite exciting, and good luck in your search for a new manager as well. Hopefully, you guys can get the next appointment just as good as as your last, and yeah. and and repeat last season's success, but get over the line. Yeah, it's fingers fun. crossed. <laughs> yeah, Cheers, how, how are you feeling it. ahead of the season? Um, to be fair, no manager at the minute, and obviously we've lost his like uh, his assistant, so it's. We're going to workshop game this first pre preseason at weekend, so that's going to be a bit of an unknown. We aren't really signing the players at the minute, and again, I think it's just waiting for whether the manager's going to be to come in. He yeah. might be want, holding off. So I'm hoping that come this preseason at weekend, that either managers didn't stand watching game, and then it's going to be next week. Because I think as the as the weeks go on longer and longer, you you know our season kicks off on fifth uh, of August couple of weeks and you're going to be going and you you want to kind of get a manager and what's understanding players and knowing the knowing the players and the players knowing the manager as well and what they're going to yeah. do so uh, apprehensive. You know it, it? yeah yeah too quick. apprehensive but we'll see what happens 
well, yeah, good luck anyway. I'll, I'll be keeping an eye to see if we get on. And uh, funny story for you then is perhaps uh, my uncle always loves to share this one and then parties that you always bring a fun fact though. Apparently, Barnsley used to be the football club I supported as like a kid just because they had the dog on the badge. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, wow, Toby Tyke. Yeah, I know. I don't remember it, mind, but uh... <laughs> it's still alive. It's, it's still his mascot on on on, gear, on match day, so he's still alive. Yeah, so it's, keep it's alive and kicking. Yeah, <laughs> keep an eye. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much, and um, I'll catch up with you again soon, hopefully. Yeah, take care. Thanks. Season. Cheers. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks.